Hello and welcome to a video. This is a video for DGST 101 Intro to Digital Studies, a class at the University of Mary Washington in the summer 2021 term. This is day two of week three of this five week class. This is actually Wednesday, even though day two is usually a Tuesday, but uh, this week day two is Wednesday because we had Monday off because of the holiday. So students in this class, Hello, hope you're doing well. Hope you are doing okay with the things that I uh, talked about yesterday in yesterday's video. Um, and those were mainly to play the video game Phone Story and to read the article, Your Phone Was Made by Slaves, which is an, a, which is an excerpt from a book by Kevin Bales. Um, I hope those things are going well. They seem to be going well for those of you who've jumped in already in Discord and on Perusal. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the next set of things I'd like for you to look at and to continue thinking about as we uh, explore our main theme this week, which has to do with the physical side of digital media objects. We learned about the four stages in the life cycle of a smartphone by playing four mini games within the game Phone Story. You also learned about coltan mining, which is part of that first stage in the article Your Phone Was Made by Slaves, and you talked about those things in Discord and Perusal. Uh, today, I'd like for you to focus on the second of those four stages as described by the game Phone Story, which has to do with the labor and I'd like for you to learn some things about allegations of abuse at one of Apple's suppliers from a few years ago. Remember, your big project this week is the object lesson, and in this assignment you're going to be choosing some electronic device, perhaps you already have, you're going to learn everything you can about its unique individual history and or potential future, and that's what I mean by those four stages that are talked about in the phone story game, and then eventually you're going to be telling that story using an interactive timeline. That's your goal for this week. I need to tell you though that there's actually another secret goal for this week that I haven't mentioned yet. Think about the four stages from the phone story game and think about the things I'm asking you to look at, play through, experience in order to learn some more about that. Phone story of course was a video game. Your phone was made by slaves as an essay. Today I'm going to ask you to listen to a podcast and tomorrow I'm going to ask you to look at a documentary film. These are four different media and these four media express their ideas in unique ways. And part of what I'm interested in you noticing is the ways that the different media communicate and get their points across. When we talk about a video game, one term we can use to describe how it presents ideas and makes arguments is procedural rhetoric. Rhetoric is the art of persuasion, and procedures are things that video games can do and can invite players to participate in. So by presenting procedures in a particular way, we play through them, we learn some things, and we may change our mind about something based on how we see that process play out in the context of the video game. Think about the different mini games. Think about what you're being asked to do. Think about how when you play on these different levels, the designer has made a really significant choice in pre presenting the scenarios in each of those four mini games. In each of those four mini games, think about what your role is. Think about what you're doing. Think about whether you would do those things in real life and whether or not you feel good about doing those things even in the context of the video game. Notice how whenever you fail at a particular level, the phone character comes back on and says, uh, don't pretend you're not complicit. There's a point that it's trying to make here, which is that by participating in the video game, we're simply uh, extending the things that we're always already implicitly doing by holding a phone, by using a phone, by taking advantage of this technology. In other words, even though we're not the one holding the gun or throwing iPhones at people, we might as well be because we participate in and benefit from that system by using these devices. So this game puts that idea to us and really challenges us to think about our responsibility in this sense. And it uses the procedures of, that, of, of those different mini games to get that across. It asks us to do those uncomfortable things in order for us to understand that there are people who actually do those uncomfortable things because in a way we've asked them to by needing these phones. Uh, think also about the essay. This is an essay by Kevin Bales. Think about how he presents his ideas. It's not just a straightforward list of facts or um, arguments with evidence. It's a series of vignettes and scenarios. Think of, notice how it starts with a, uh, a story about tombstones. And uh, there's an idea there, I think, that all of us must die, all of us, all of us must think about our mortality. A tombstone is this inevitable thing at the end of our lives. And it's something that, you know, kind of anchors us. When we think about tombstones, we kind of think about ourselves and our own mortality, just inevitably. Uh, think about the scene, the dramatic scene in the middle of the essay where he arrives at the village on the helicopter. And think about all the detail he puts into describing that scenario. Um, that doesn't really have to do with Colton, it just helps set the scene. It creates a dramatic sense of immersion for the readers, and we feel like we're there, we feel like we're involved, we feel like we care about what's happening there because he's able to create that scene using dramatic, uh, theatrical kind of language to talk about that. That is an element of a, of a, 
a, a journalistic essay like the kind we're reading here, and it, I think, really works in this case. Today, I'm asking you to listen to a podcast, so I have a few things that I'd like for you to listen for as you approach this new form of media. Now, a podcast, as you probably know, is a audio series, usually, uh, usually spoken word, usually presented in serial form, usually nonfiction, but not always. And uh, these are pretty familiar and, and popular forms of, of media consumption today. Uh, audio only, uh, that's the modality. Um, briefly, the medium I would say here is a podcast or maybe the genre, and the modality is audio, meaning that we're, we're listening to it when we experience it. And uh, podcasts have been around for many years now, almost 20 years, probably. I'm certainly no expert on podcasts, by the way, but I do listen to them. And as far as I know, the oldest podcast is open source. Um, uh, hosted by Christopher Leiden. I, I listen to that one occasionally. It's pretty good. Um, but there's lots of other ones out there. Many of them are fictional. Many of them are true crime. That's a very popular genre of podcast. Um, these are typically presented in a series. And so you listen to a series uh, of episodes over some time. Um, I have, Historically, I've not always been a big podcast listener, but during the past couple years, um, for various reasons, I haven't been able to run as much as I'd like, and so I've been walking a lot instead, and as I've been walking, I find it's useful to listen to something so I'm not bored. I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks, but sometimes I run out of audiobooks, and so I listen to podcasts instead, and it's another good way to pass the time. It can be a really interesting and really compelling uh, form of media communication. And if you're really interested in podcasts, I recommend listening to some that are really uh, well produced and really well crafted as audio pieces. It's not just someone talking into a microphone. Uh, Radio Lab is usually highly produced, for example. Uh, Snap Judgment is also usually really rich and complicated to listen to and really you know interesting uh, and dynamic and, and you know dramatic. Uh, this week and today, really, I'm assigning you to listen to an episode of a podcast called This American Life. It is also a radio show, so it is um, participates in both the medium of radio and of podcasts. And it is a usually a nonfiction, usually journalistic, hour-long radio show broadcast usually on NPR stations around the country. This American Life was originally just the radio show. It started in the 1990s, and it is a weekly show hosted by Ira Glass. Ira Glass is the host, and that means he's usually not the one telling the story. Usually he invites uh, one or two or sometimes three or more storytellers to come in, and those are often journalists or producers, and there's typically a kind of essayistic style to the stories that you hear on This, this American Life, uh, but oftentimes they are just straightforward investigative journalism, and they've been known for doing some really excellent work in that area. For today, I'm asking you to read one episode's transcript and listen to another episode. The episode that I'm asking you to read is unique or unusual because you cannot actually listen to it. And you cannot actually listen to it because it has been retracted. And you'll find out why when you listen to the next episode. Uh, but start with episode 454. Episode 454 is titled Mr. Daisy and the Apple Factory. And in that episode, Ira Glass, as the host, invites Mike Daisy, a... Um, performer to come in and tell a story about his visit to a Foxconn factory and what he saw there. That story was retracted and in episode 460 of This American Life titled Retraction, Ira Glass explains why they decided to retract the story and essentially confronts Mike Daisy with some pretty serious accusations and questions. Those are important questions, and it's a really compelling bit of audio storytelling. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in your ideas and your responses to some of the questions that are raised there. In particular, one thing is, Mike Daisy's story is very compelling. It is very emotional in many ways. Should we still find it as compelling as we might initially have once we learn that many of the details probably weren't actually true? How does that change our relationship to the things we take away from it? Uh, I think it changes it a lot, but we can listen to it. Mike Daisy does have, he has a defense, and we can decide whether or not we, we accept that uh, once we listen to it. But beyond that, I'm also really interested in how that episode 460 is edited. And so if you listen to it and you pay attention to how the different pieces are structured, there are a couple of really powerful moments in that episode that are incredibly awkward to listen to. 
and I really challenge you and urge you to listen to that episode instead of reading the transcript. I, I really, really encourage you to listen to it at regular speed instead of at, at fast speed. Um, also, some podcast apps let you skip silences or skip over silences. Don't do that. Um, listen to it at the regular speed because you really have to experience it to get the full force of the awkwardness because that's really some powerful audio storytelling, I think. And I think you should uh, embrace and, and listen to it. Daily tasks for week three, day two of this class. First of all, you should read episode number 454 of This American Life. It is titled Mr. Daisy and the Apple Factory, and you'll find it on the This American Life website, or I will link to it in the notes for today. You should also listen to episode number 460, which is titled Retraction. Next, I would like for you to reflect on those episodes and discuss them in Discord, or you could use your blog. Remember, Discord is great for short, snappy messages and quick, kind of immediate conversations, and your blog is a great place for longer thoughts and things where you want to provide examples and link to other things. So just keep that in mind. I think the conversation is getting a little bit quicker and, and more Discord-like in Discord, and I appreciate that. But just remember, if you have more than a paragraph to say, then that's probably a blog post and not a Discord message. Um, some, here are some specific questions you might want to try to answer, but of course you should feel open to discussing anything that occurs to you. Uh, the big question, I guess, is what do we do with Mike Daisy and his story? I mean, does the fact that he embellished some details mean that we should reject everything he says? Um, there is definitely a kernel of truth in what he's talking about, so what do we do with that kernel? Uh, or you could also look at it like, you know, this episode came out in 2012. What have we done or what have people done with that information since then? That's something you could probably find out. Um, in the telling of this story, how do you feel about Mike Daisy? Do you sympathize with him at all? Um, maybe that doesn't matter, but at the end of episode 460, is he a sympathetic character? Or does he come across as more of a villain? Um, that's debatable, so what do you think? Uh, and another kind of different question is, you know, one of the most interesting moments in episode number 460 is the silence. And there is one moment in particular that's 13 seconds long of excruciating silence. Um, I'm just wondering, can you think of any other examples in media where there's a long or unexpected silence and it has a similar kind of jarring emotional effect? I can think of a couple, but you can probably think of more. So let's talk about them. When, when has silence been used in a compelling way and that you've noticed or that you can think of? Uh, and then finally, one more thing, this is uh, a bit of on your own research. So for this week, you are going to be working on an object lesson where you're going to choose an electronic device. If you've already chosen that object lesson, I mean, if you've already chosen that object for the object lesson, then I'd like for you to research its manufacturer's record on labor conditions and workers' rights. If you have not chosen an object yet, just use your smartphone or computer and see what you can find out about their manufacturer's records on labor conditions and workers' rights. For example, I just came across this. This is a 2019 statement. So I just Googled this and this is one of the first things that came up. I'm sure there are probably more recent statements than this, but this came out in 2019 and this is a statement by Apple, a report talking about their efforts to combat human trafficking and slavery in their business and supply chains. I haven't read this report, but it's only 14 pages long. I think there's probably some pretty interesting things in here and I bet they are responding to some of the uh, issues raised by the kind of reporting or the kind of storytelling that we heard from Mike Daisy. So see if you can find anything like that for the manufacturers of your digital object. That's about it for today's video. Tomorrow you'll be learning about the fourth stage in the life cycle of an electronic object, and that's the phase where that object becomes e-waste or maybe gets recycled. I'll also spend some time on tomorrow's video talking about the object lesson assignments. Specifically, I want to give you some pointers on how to do the research for that project, or really investigation. It's more of an investigation than research. And I'll also explain how to use Timeline.js, which is the software I'd like for you to use to create the interactive timeline, which will be the final product of that project. So thanks for watching. If you have questions, I'll be online in Discord sporadically. If you see me online, feel free to say hi or send me a message if you have a question or just want to say hi. Uh, otherwise, I will see you in another video tomorrow and some other time online. Thanks. Bye.